Is there a biological reason for the origins or at minimum the symptoms of being a vampire that comes from folklore? Well, believe it or not, yes. And seeing as it's almost Halloween, this is the perfect time to talk about Xeroderma pigmentosum. Now we all know about vampires. They prefer to move around during the night and when they do their hunting, they stay within a dark and dank area. Should they choose to move during the day, this can result in their end as they are burned away to nothing in a matter of moments due to the sun's ultraviolet radiation. This ultraviolet radiation exists outside the range of visible light to the human eyes to detect, but interestingly, birds can actually see the world in ultraviolet, allowing them to spot colors we can't even imagine. I know using uh, the phrase can't even imagine is sort of a cop-out, but go ahead and explain the color green to me without using the word green or any other color. Pretty hard, right? Exactly. Anyways, back to vampires. This specific genetic issue is known to plague humanity with about a rate of one in a million concerning the United States and Europe, but in Japan, North Africa, and the Middle East, this disease is more prevalent. Xeroderma pigmentosum is commonly referred to as X P, which is what I will be calling it throughout the rest of this video because holy lord if that is not a mouthful and a half. Essentially it's an inherited condition which makes a person exceedingly sensitive to ultraviolet rays from the sun, which as we all know are virtually impossible to escape unless you completely cover up your body during the day. The condition will mostly affect the eyes, more so back in the day when sunglasses didn't exist, and any other areas of exposed skin that the person may have forgotten to cover up. Ultimately this can lead to nervous tissue issues should the disease not be approached seriously. The signs and symptoms of XP will for the most part appear in infancy and early childhood. Now any parents out there will know it's fairly typical to send your child outside to run around to get out some of that energy, but some parents, well one in a million parents that is, may notice their child comes back with an extreme sunburn that lasts for weeks with blisters occurring all over the exposed skin. Some cases, not being as extreme, will not burn but tan extremely quickly. Freckles will begin to appear rapidly across large areas of the skin that was exposed, signaling possible damage to the skin by age 2. Freckling itself is not damaged per se, but you get the picture. Still with others, they may exhibit extremely dry skin and skin coloring changes giving the condition Xeroderma pigmentosum its name, and that will be the last time I say it. <laughs> so what are the consequences of the massively rare disorder? Most of those who are exposed to direct sunlight will begin developing skin cancers by about the age of 10. Throughout their life, they will more than likely experience multiple different types of skin cancers that will need to be treated quickly. These cancers can occur really anywhere such as the exposed face, lips, eyelids, but it can also begin to form on the scalp in the eyes themselves and the tips of their tongue. The issue with skin cancer is that it's also fairly mobile, so this could result in brain tumors. Strangely, however, this genetic disorder also appears to affect other areas and its ability to fight cancers. Should any amount of toxic chemicals come into contact with, say, the internal organs, like if a person smokes, then they are actually more prone to lung cancer than those who do not have this disorder. Personally, I find the eye aspect the most horrifying. I don't know about you guys, but I actually love to be able to see. Without it, life would be kind of a drag. People with XP specifically will actually experience pain associated with not protecting their eyes from the UV light of the sun. This will lead to them becoming bloodshot and irritated and could ultimately result in the cornea becoming cloudy and obstructed. It also has the added effect of causing the eyelashes to fall out, lessening the protection to the eye, and due to this disease, the eyelids become thinner. On top of cancer within the eye itself, this disease also inspires non-cancerous growths within the eye, which tend to impair vision. Circling back to the neurological issues, as time progresses, a person can expect to see a degradation in their hearing, coordination, difficulty walking, movement problems in general, loss of intellectual function, difficulty swallowing, and seizures. This unfortunately will worsen as time progresses. So now that you bared with me through the symptoms, let's discuss the why since we have a firm grasp on what it actually does. When the UV light strikes the surface of the skin, it actually has more than enough energy to pierce through the skin, thus it will go into the cellular membrane and through that the nuclear membrane until it eventually hits the DNA of this person. Through the course of us evolving on this planet and just living in general, our bodies have adapted to this by producing producing darker skin pigmentation in areas closer to the equator, and lighter skin pigmentation in those closer to the poles. It has to do with protection of the cellular DNA, but also nutrient absorption. Regardless of all that, in people with XP, they have a mutation in their genes which has rendered the ability to repair their damaged DNA and severely inhibited it. In normal cells, it's not too uncommon for us to walk outside and receive immediate damage to the skin. In fact, if you've ever gone to the beach and get a slight sunburn, congrats! You've damaged your DNA to the point it's warranted an immune response like swelling. With XP, these people, as mentioned, lack the ability to repair their DNA. The process is known as the nucleotide excision repair, mandated by the genes known as the NER-related genes. With these genes altered, it will severely impede the excision tool from recognizing the DNA damage and repairing it. Typically in a normal cell, the DNA is red. If damage is found, the specific point concerning the DNA is unwound, the damage is snipped out, and then the enzymes will replace that damage with the correct DNA. With this not happening in a person with an XP disorder, this leads to a detriment 
detrimental buildup of damage in the DNA, such as mutations, but more importantly, the main issue we all have, thymine thymine dimers. When your DNA is exposed to UV radiation, thymine located next to one another will have a propensity to covalently link, as opposed to linking to the adenine hydrogen base across from it. In a normally functioning excision repair, the link is quickly broken and the thymine will be linked back up to the adenine. In a person with XP, this is never corrected. Due to this, when the cell undergoes cellular mitosis, the damage will be transferred to the daughter cell. Essentially, when replicating the DNA, it won't know what to actually link up there, so it'll pretty much just guess. And should this happen in an important gene, this can cause a cell to become cancerous and move throughout the body. The general mutations do not even have to be thymine dimers though. Mutations within the gene can be as detrimental as the DNA becoming completely broken. When a UV radiation strikes DNA in just the right way, it can actually break both strands, completely separating the helical structure. If this is to happen, your body will attempt to repair it normally, but even in a normal functioning body, this could be very detrimental. But considering if a person has XP, repairing becomes exceedingly tricky, and it may not even really be repaired at all. This can quickly lead to cellular game end, and if it is fixed, there is no guarantee it will be in the correct placement, which can turn into cancers later on. Now here's where I mentioned CRISPR and the ability it has to help fix this. CRISPR could help fix the DNA of a person, not just because of the issues that arise from DNA mutations, but the genes of a person could be fixed to fix the mechanism responsible for fixing the DNA. So fixing the DNA helps fix the mechanism and protein production for excision, which then in turn helps fix the DNA. Sunrise, sunset, it's such a beautiful process. So let's all be thankful for how hard our bodies work on a daily basis to keep us healthy and treat them with some respect. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed. I gotta tell you, I'm absolutely loving having a more science-focused channel. I get to learn new things about science myself and then pass them along to you. So far, it's been a lot of fun and I appreciate all the support in this endeavor. Anyhow, thanks for watching guys and I will see y'all in the next one.